And I know that the popular thing has been start with why. I don't necessarily agree with that. You have to have a what, and then you can say, well, this is why that what is so important to me, but I need to have this what. And it's okay if it is what other might, people might say, like, ridiculous. It, it's okay if it scares you a little bit to talk about, and if it doesn't, it's probably not gonna really push you to be different and challenge you. Steve Brinstein, the first 3.0 guest. Welcome back, how are you doing, and uh, congratulations. Uh, thank you so much, man. It's it's always fun to kind of jump on and just kind of talk shop a little bit. Oh, like the name of the oh, podcast. Oh, but, oh, I see what you did but, there. <laughs> but I do, I, I value these conversations. They're always fun to just kind of talk about kind of the journeys that have, have gone on in different aspects of our careers and the twists and turns that life takes us on. And I appreciate the congratulations. We'll get into that uh, later in the podcast as why that is uh, a fun topic for today. A little, uh, little foreshadow. So quick crash course, even though Steve was, or is the first 3.0 guest. So he was on episode 88 round table episode 100 with my top three favorite guests, but Steve being a boss mentor really since 2016, I guess when I was, I was part-time at t- or uh, in, an intern and you were in charge of my questions that whole summer and then Steve broke his knee and I went full time basically. And, um, but more so six to seven days a week, kind of the last three years before I got my, my current job at Northwestern, but if I could wish someone like Steve upon the listener, I think they couldn't ask for someone better like Steve. So uh, you're the person I named drop the most, the person that I, I've learned the most from. Um, and yeah, I just want to chat about things that we've chatted about in the past for my own career and journey. But now, as a lot of it has been my own career development, now getting into your own career development. So Although we kind of chat about the story in 88, but um, Steve is going full-time with Jeremy Boone for leadership development, small business development. Um, But let's just start with the choice of pursuing someone like Jeremy Boone for your own development, and then we will kind of go from there. Yeah. Uh, Thank you so much for just the the kind words. You know, I I do these relationships with mentor mentee mean a lot to me as well. Uh, Anytime I'm able to make an impact with somebody. Um, But for my own journey, uh, speaking on that, just as seeking out a mentor, um, I, in my career to that point, when I, I finally made contact with Jeremy, I didn't really have a mentor in place. I had people that I worked for or people I worked with, but there was no intentionality about it. I didn't really know what I needed help with at that time. When you're young in your career, everything's new. And so you're just trying to learn everything, soaking up I was doing X's and O's for speed training, X's and O's for strength training, plyometrics. Then I was like, man, business, leadership, sales, marketing, anything you could get your hands on, it was all new. And you you didn't know that a lot of it was maybe recycled information packaged differently. And so it was just exciting to just learn these new ideas and hear these new ideas for the first time. Um, but after you get into positions where you're really having to make impacts with other people. And that was when I got to be a director of coaching. That's when I started to feel the struggle of not really knowing how to apply this information I had. And then I tried to read more or listen to more. But then every time I read or listened, I started to say, well, yeah, no, I already know that. But when I had that conversation, it didn't go the way the book said. Or I tried that, but it didn't really go the way that they said it would when they were speaking about it. And that is where you start to struggle and you start to question everything. And we all battle that identity piece to say, am I really cut out for this role? Am I in a position that I should be leading other people? And I felt like it was something that I needed to get better at because I kept getting put into these roles to be a leader, quote unquote. And then I would ask like, why, why are you, putting me in these positions. And this was not just at TC Boost. It was other situations that I was just kind of being leaned into. And it came down to essentially like I was someone that worked really hard. And so you became that lowest level of I led by example. And so everyone was like, well, man, he works really hard. He's having success. If he just shows everybody else to do like he does, it'll work. Um, And I think my personality is a, a little bit engaging just by nature. Like 
people enjoy just talking with me and I have a little bit of that magnetic natural feel with it. Um, but I didn't really understand what I was doing. And what brought me to Jeremy was not necessarily knowing that that's what he did. It was trying to get him on my podcast. And the running joke is that I didn't know then, but he's always saying like, yeah, 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 we'll get to that. And then never, never, it'll never happen. Uh, eventually now, after seven years of knowing him, he's actually been on the podcast with me. Um, but, hey, better late than never. Right. We got him. We got him. But uh, serendipitously, we were at a clinic and at that clinic, I was in the back watching someone do a demonstration and they pointed right to me and go, oh, there's the man. He just walked in. And I'm like, what? I like look over my shoulder and Jerry Bone is, Jeremy Boone is literally standing right behind me. And in that moment, I say, like, looking back it was so important that I said, I need to talk to him. There's a reason why he just walked in behind me. I've been trying to connect with him for weeks and months about going on the podcast. Like, I got to take advantage of this. On Facebook, that's how long ago this was, right? Oh, man, this was a long time ago. So we were trying on every platform possible. And then uh, had a little conversation with him. I went to his breakout session. And it was probably one of the most challenging sessions I've ever gone to as far as a clinic goes. It was all about leadership. And he was really just pushing guys to say, like, you're not unique as a leader, essentially because you don't invest enough to really be a leader. And so you're just doing surface level words. You're doing surface level leadership with the people you're trying to impact. And it stuck with me. And he made a post as a follow-up afterwards. And I reached out and we had a little conversation that led to a few phone calls. And then I, I reached out saying like, I want to go through this mentorship program with you to become a better leader. Like you have a curriculum in place. Like I, I need this for myself. I need this to, to enhance what I can do with the staff that I work with, the facility that I'm at. And I was really at a crossroads at that time to say, maybe I need to get out of this field completely. I was really like, I need to go maybe start something new. Do I go out on my own? Do I go into the high school setting? I was having some opportunities in there. Do I just change completely? Like, do I, do I go into real estate, something like that? Was it, I didn't know. Was it the the new title and new role? Because you'd been coaching at TC Boost for however many years. What? Yeah, I'd been I'd been coaching there probably for four and a half years at this point. Then I became the director of coaching. So I was the director of coaching. But it becomes like once you reach that pinnacle of what you can do, I had that role for a couple of years. And then you're like, well, what else am I going to do here? Like, I don't know What's what next? else I'm going to do. Yeah. And now I'm just getting frustrated because this was my goal. I said, I never really wanted to own a facility. I just wanted to be a top level guy, really running a facility and making things happen. But then I was getting frustrated because I, I couldn't make the things happen that I wanted to happen. I wasn't able to really lead the people on staff the way I wanted to lead them. I wasn't able to lead the owner the way that the leader, the owner needed to be led to really make things happen for the facility. And so it was like, is this what it is? Like I'm at the top now. I, I can't really coach more. I'm jammed up. I coach 35 to 45 hours a week on top of being a, a director for the people in the facility and helping run the facility. And a husband and a dad. You know, like there was a lot of stuff. And you're like, well, I just I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. You know, like you're at that point, I was 20, 29, 30, maybe 31. And you're like, okay is this what I'm going to do for the next like 25 years is just this every single day. And that's what made me really start to question about like, what am I doing? What do I really want to do in the end? And early on in my career, like I had always said, eventually I want to get into speaking, writing, whatever it looks like. Well, this is when I was like 24, but just saying like, I don't know what's going to look like 30 years from now, but I know that I can't just coach forever. I want to be able to become a good enough coach that there's value in me coming and consulting or there's value in me speaking and people want to listen because of the things I've done along the way. So that was always in the back of my mind too. I'll never forget this convo. You were like, yeah, I'm not going to be like coaching on the floor, chasing kids forever. And then this was a few years ago. So I was, I don't know, 25, 26. And I was like, wait, I don't want to be doing this forever either. <laughs> you know, yeah. there's just such a light bulb of like, how do I use this to eventually not be doing this? Yeah. Um, but another convo, I'm going to assume it was from you at this point. It was uh, <laughs> like imposter syndrome, you know? Yeah. And yeah. how I, I synthesized that information was you're only an imposter if your actions don't line up with your words, yeah. right? So if you're the director of coaching and you say, oh, I don't feel comfortable or this isn't right, 
it's not that you have to be perfect right when you get it, but are you doing something about it? 100%. Right. Yeah. So that was your attempt to kind of help close that gap was kind 100%. of my understanding of all of that. Yeah. It's a great, I mean, that's how I've, I've described imposter syndrome for a while now is that that's the truth. You, you never move into a new role knowing exactly how to do that role. And that's where I say like, it was, it was not the first year, you know, it, I was excited at the beginning and I was like diving into some different things and trying to run meetings and taking the suggestions from different people about how to try to run meetings. But after like two, two and a half years, it wasn't moving the way I thought it should be moving. And I was never one to just blame everyone else. You know, like when you, when you're a director and your team or your staff is not doing what should be done, it's easy to say like, man, they just, they're bad. They suck. They, yeah. They, yeah. They don't want to be better. They're, they're worthless. I just got to get new people in and then it'll be better. I never had that mentality with it. I just said like, I don't think I'm, I'm doing what I should be doing for them to help them become better. And I'm not navigating these conversations the right way. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I just know that I don't feel like I'm doing Something's it the right off. way. Yeah. Yeah. My vibe, I can just tell it's off. Uh, I think that's, that's a skill I think I have. Um, with the ability to like, you can call it like reading people, but you can just kind of like feel an emotion or you just feel the direction a conversation is going. And I know when it's going well and I know when it's not going well, I always have. And I could just tell they, they weren't going the way I was hoping. So then you finally tracked down the man, the myth, the legend, yeah. Jeremy Boone. Yeah. Did this, uh, you know, 12 week yeah. kind of one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. um, before Jeremy had all the offerings that he has now. And then it was like week 13, he reached out. Week 14, he reached out. So then mm -hmm. take me through kind of that point in time until the discussion of like, hey, you should you should hop on and like join me. Yeah, uh, I'll reflect on it without knowing what I know now. Because in the moment, I didn't know that it wasn't what it he normally does with a client. Mm -hmm. I thought that was just like, oh, this is just how it goes. You know, the, the, it ends and you say, yeah, you've gone through the program. And then the next week, hey, what, do, what are you working on now? Next week, what are, what are you working on now? How are you feeling about this? And along the way, I looking back now, it's like, oh, man, I can see that he was just testing to see where I was at. But he would say, like, would you ever consider leaving TC Boost? This was like five and a half. Oh, man, we're almost at like six Jeez. and a half years ago. It's like six and a half years ago. And I was like, yeah, I mean, like eventually, like that's the plan is like, I, I don't want to be doing this forever. I want to make a bigger impact. I want to scale. I don't want to just have to coach athletes one-on-one -on -one or small groups. And, but I said, like, I, I love doing it. And I feel like it's really valuable for what I want to do next. He's like, no, that's great. That makes sense. That was the conversation. But like, now I know that that was an important question he was asking me, you know, and then as we were going through the leadership piece I and mean, he was just kind of constantly asking about how I was feeling about the application. You know, and I was like, I mean, I'm loving it. Like it's, it's, it's what I want to be doing is really helping people achieve things beyond what they thought were possible. That's my personal kind of promised land that I'm always working towards is just, if you were able to guide someone to something they didn't even know that they could do, that's so special to me. You know, I, I love what people say goals, but I think it's really special when you go beyond that. Um, and those were kind of conversations that were going on. And I went through it with coach Pat Nolan. We went in it, not knowing that both of us were going through it. It was probably like week five of going through it. And he was like, yeah, I have another coach who's kind of going through it. And I was like, listen, I'm talking about it. I was like, wait a minute. Is that you talking about Pat Nolan? He's like, yeah, Pat <laughs> Nolan's going, he's, I'm like, I've known Pat for like Small eight years. World. Yeah. And so like Pat and I were texting about it on the side. Well, like at the end of it, when Jeremy and I were still talking like weekly, I asked Pat, I'm like, yeah, you know, like I was talking to Jeremy yesterday. He's like, oh, you were talking to Jeremy? I uh -oh. like, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I haven't talked to him in a couple of weeks. I was like, oh, really? He's like, yeah, no, like we kind of wrapped everything up. And I, I just kind of texted him when I got something going on. I was like, oh, that's, that's interesting. Like, I didn't really say that, like, we're texting a bunch, we're calling it regularly and just kind of talking through things. Um, but yeah, then there was the opportunity that like, hey, I'd like to do this a little bit differently besides just one on one. I'd like to maybe like go on Zoom and have a group of like four or five go through it. And he's like, you want to kind of help me with it? Just see if it feels like a good fit. And I was like, yeah, man, this is exciting. Like, this is exactly what I'd love to get into. And so that was the start of it was kind of just popping in and out, going through some of it. And then it'd be like, hey, I can't make the call. Do you want to lead this call? And you're going to talk about this part of the curriculum. 
yeah, that's great. We just got to check in. He would prep me beforehand. We'd go through it. And then after we'd like always talk the next day about how it went. And, you know, I, I was getting to feel like, man, I, I really like this. I, I like this idea of this being something I'm doing. Um, but still, I didn't understand the scale that he pictured it of like me being full time with him and not having to really coach as much as I was doing right now, or if at all, um, but I thought it was just like, man, this is great. Like I can do it a couple hours a week, really impact people the way I was hoping and maybe eventually make, make an income doing this. Um, but it really slowly was happening. And I didn't really realize the uniqueness of our situation um, for context, like hundreds, few thousand coaches, ADs, managers of teams have gone through leadership training with Jeremy over the last like 20 years. And so I had no reason to believe like I was going to be a unique candidate um, when I started it. So knowing that it was something that you enjoyed, it was different, probably aligned a little bit more with what you wanted to do. Was there things? So there was like the staff at TC boost, a chance to like sharpen those skills. For sure. But I haven't found a less, not crude, but straightforward way to be like, the harder I try to leave TC Boost, the better I coach at TC Boost, right? Yeah, yeah. So like whether it was you really want to work with basketball guys, so sending out DMs, making groups, like doing stuff like that. Yeah. Was there anything that you kind of sought out or used TC Boost as the platform or springboard that it was, whether it was like trying to get groups of like the coaches, the sport coaches that like GBN, GBS, or whatever it may be kind of on top of your director of coaching roles using the doors that TC boost had kind of opened. Yeah. I mean, that's always the the goal. And I've always said that for everybody on staff is always use this platform as just a way to interact with anybody that you, you want to. And so I was able to go from a relatively like young novice coach, exploring the national high school strength coaches association, um, to then being on the board of the Illinois branch within like a year and a half, two years. And that was really because of the opportunity I had at GBN through TC Boost. Like I was at Glenberg North High School every single day, working with those athletes, working with those coaches, working with the administration and getting an opportunity to really understand the dynamic of a academic institution um, through that. And then similarly, I'm able to be a part of the combine prep that's going on at Northwestern. I'm able to be, over at Northwestern for some of the speaking engagements and just get to, to know those coaches and hear their stories. And then utilizing uh, that relationship to then bridge a gap with Dave Vitell over at Loyola. And so there's after kind of understanding the intentionality that needs to go in behind all this stuff, um, I really was able to leverage my position to just reach out to people and asked us to have conversations with them. And it really didn't have a ton of agenda about where it was going to go often. Like when I'm reaching out to guys at Loyola University, like I'm not looking for a job there. You know, like that was not something I was looking for. The guys at Northwestern, I was not looking for a job there. The National High School Strength Coaches Association, there's really no huge benefit, like monetarily or position wise that comes from that. But it was just being able to hear different guys' stories and just listen through this lens that I was developing as far as what a leader is and understanding everyone has frustrations in all these situations. And some of them are very similar time and time again. And you're like, oh, wait, well, I just was like going through leadership development and that brought a lot of clarity for my struggle that is the exact same struggle you have and the struggle you have, but wildly different environments. And those were some of the ones that was I was able to really utilize my skill not to try and solve everyone's problems, which is really difficult. Um, anytime you learn a new skill, everyone's very excited to share it with everyone, regardless if they care or not about what you learn. Uh, but the skill I had was like really listening intentionally and listening with curiosity to really hear their stories hear the pain points, ask some questions, really understand what was the problem they were really dealing with. So a quote of yours about like TC boost was if you're here past like two years, either the plan has gone very poorly or we're all going to the moon, you know? Yeah. yeah. And your 
you know, time at TC Boost, 10, 11 years, but even just boiling it down to just the, you know, six years ish, kind of with Jeremy Boone, um, why was the last six years as long as it was, even though these conversations had been had about like, hey, what do you think? Hey, do you want to come join me? And mm -hmm. kind of uh, reflecting back, why was it as long as it was? Yeah. Uh, honestly, it was a lot of Jeremy just saying like, you need to get better first and you need reps and your reps are coming every hour, every day, every week that you're still in that space. You are sharpening your skills. You are developing the kind of language and understanding that will be scalable. I didn't understand. I didn't know at that moment what that meant as far as what the scale was going to be. Right. But I, I knew that, yeah, you know what? I do feel like I'm getting better at this and I'm, I'm leading it in a different way. And when I'm listening to others that are quote unquote experts in this sector of, of coaching, I'm listening through an interesting lens now where I'm like, oh, I'm not sure about that. And then if I ask questions, it, it kind of stumps you a little bit and you're like, okay, well, I'm going to back off. I didn't mean to like make it weird, but like you just hear it differently. The lens is changing as far as what you're doing. And in the meantime at TC Boost, I, I still had a story that I wanted to tell. I, I've always said that I, I wanted to really help guide the facility to a certain revenue that I knew was possible. Now, there's always things that will get in the way, whether it's staff changing, you know, like right when you get into a great vibe and you're like, man, this staff, if we just stick together for like eight months in a row, man, this could be an awesome year. And then someone leaves or we have to let someone go. And it's, it's like, all right, well, that kind of shot us in the foot a little bit. But I wanted to make sure that it was, it was definitely not because I was giving up. It was that it was things outside my control were, were stopping, you know, and I was, there's a piece that we talk about often, which is toleration versus having patience. And they're difficult to navigate for all of us to say, I need to be patient. I need to struggle here. I need to make mistakes a little bit more. I need to try things versus I'm just tolerating everything that's going on. And I'm just kind of giving up and just sitting here. And so that was, that was the big piece. Then as we've gotten closer and closer to this time where I'm actually leaving, it started to transition a little bit more to, all right, well, we're working in these different spaces. And if they do hit, that's when the conversation is going to have to happen about what's the time commitment we need to make. And in anything, when you're doing sales and when you're far enough along in your career and you have a family, you have a mortgage, you have a wife that has a, a, a salon she owns, she owns her own business. You can't quickly gamble on just like, oh, we'll figure it out. Well, no, I'm, I make a certain amount of money every month. Like I need to make sure that that's covered. I need to make sure that my kids like insurance is going to be, we're good with that. There's, there's a few boxes you have to check first before you can make that move. And that's where for anyone listening right now, like I was on Matt's but nonstop at TC Boost towards the end about like, you're young and you have nothing as a responsibility right now, but you. So every time you're like, oh, I don't make as much money. I'm always like, what does that even mean? Like, just go, go seek an opportunity. And right before Matt had the opportunity with Northwestern, we were having conversations about either you are going to be taking a position somewhere or you need to just go and experience a college level program and intern at some capacity at the best program you possibly find, because this is your chance. The further you will get into TC boost, all of a sudden you were thinking about, I'm going to buy uh, a duplex, a condo, a townhouse. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Well, now you're stuck because you can't leave to go take this fun experience. You can't leave to take this position. And so that was, Towards the end, that was more of what was going on, it was just that idea of, okay, well, we got to check these certain boxes. We need these, this, this, and this to hit because that guarantees us. And then we can go for it from there. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a weird line to, to navigate of when you have the lack of strings, you yeah. know, a mortgage, kids, like, a, like spouse and whatnot, you don't have the experience to get those roles. 
Yeah. But then when you have the experience and, you know, the desirability, I guess, that's when, you know, just those things accumulate. So I think it's yeah. an interesting line, but I don't think I've ever told this story about, uh, about Miami. Um, yeah, I won't tell all, all the details, but long story short, it was an opportunity to go do sports science for the university of Miami football. Kind of when all this was happening, kind of coming up on two and a half, three years at TC boost. And it was like, just go figure it out and shout out to you and Tommy for, you know, being the leaders that you, you were and how supportive you were of, you know, it's seven months, you know, paid, um, not that much living in Miami, but you just have to figure out if it's for you or it's not. And you can come back here if like worse comes to worst. Yeah. You know, and then long story short, it ended up being unpaid. I ended up not going. And then there was a few other job opportunities, full-time jobs, because when it rains, it pours, I guess. And then this current, you know, opportunity came to be. Um, but yeah, I think it gets to a point like the patience and toleration. And yeah. believe it or not, I might not be the most patient person in, in the world. <laughs> um, but I don't know how you made it as long not in a negative way but like yeah. 10 years is a long long time yeah so could you reflect back on a few moments where you're like like not screw this but it's like i just want to be done like i've done everything here but then looking back it's like oh that's why yeah that's why i was here yeah i mean like the the moments where um that happens is more of frustration with our execution based on a vision that we described mm, that, that for me is what, yeah that's what always will will get me down and make it a struggle for me on the day to day as as a professional in this industry and i would consider myself a pretty high level professional like i'm not i'm not somebody that comes in and is just dragging their feet around showing up late like i make sure that i dot my i's and cross my t's every single day i come in the facility I could always coach sessions and I always enjoy, even now, as I know I'm changing paths, long days are a little bit harder because you're like, oh man, like, was this worth it today? Like I'm on my way out in like two weeks. I really need to put in this like 12 hour Wednesday that I was there. But each hour that I'm actually coaching, I really enjoy. And it's fun because you get to make an impact with an athlete who's younger, a group of 10, a five person group some kids that are nine or 10 years old, an adult client, those are always great hours. And so no matter how maybe frustrated I was on the, the big scale, micro, I was always enjoying my coaching sessions. And I always enjoyed the interactions with the staff. And I always enjoyed seeing you guys have success. Um, but yeah, I mean, there were plenty of moments where it was just like, I don't think I can do this based on just like, we're not executing on what we said we were going to do as a team, maybe from the top down, it's just not going the way it should be going. This is not what I really want to be doing anymore. Um, but I decided a while ago that I was never going to let those moments dictate how I was going to feel about the future. Um, and I always want to be present enough in what's going on to say like, this is happening for a reason. What can I pull out of it? And I said that when I reflect back on my younger years when I did door-to-door -door sales, um, I hated it. I was in Mobile, Alabama and I was down in Texas. It was not enjoyable. I did not enjoy the product we were selling. I didn't believe in it enough. And the whole time I just wanted to get out of there. That's all I wanted to do was just get out, get out, get out. And I wasn't aware at all in the moment of like, the benefit this was developing my skill set that if I could have these like very odd interactions with people that I was trying to sell them something immediately, how easy would it be to have conversations with people that actually wanted a service that I was offering? And I, I, that was, that's what made it easier as we were, we were kind of getting through this. There were still plenty of times where you're just frustrated and just like, I, this is insane. Why am I doing this? Um, but the older you get, the the faster time goes by where where you guys are like, it's been a year. Oh my gosh, I need to like move on. Like a year goes by so quick. Like my oldest daughter is seven. Like I Jeez. I don't know how that happened. Like my son's about to be two. Like these No way. The, I mean, this is what happened. Like the time just goes by 
when you're so young, it feels like it's never going to get to that point. But as you get older, it's like, man, I wish it would slow down just a little bit. It's going so fast. And so that last five years, since the first day I met Jeremy, it has been a whirlwind. Like, it doesn't feel like it was six and a half years ago. It feels like, man, maybe like last year is when I did that with him. And then we like talk about it. And it's like, man, look at all these things that you've been a part of over the years and done this and came down to Charlotte for this. And I came up and did this in Wisconsin a year ago. Like it's it's wild. Um, yes, yeah, so I think like your your hindsight when you start reflecting is like, oh, man, that actually went super fast. It wasn't that long. You know, 10 years is not a crazy amount of time. And we've talked about that on staff a bunch. Sounding like Gary Vee right now. Yeah, it, it goes by so quickly. And, you know, yourself and Mike, we had lots of conversations about that, about like, well, I'm going to do this for a year. I'm like, dude, a year is nothing. You don't do anything in a year. It just mm -hmm. flies by when you look back on it. Like, don't don't put these arbitrary deadlines on stuff like that, where it's like, oh, I'm going to stay there a year, then I'll move there. I'll do that for two years, maybe. So then like four years from now, I'll be there. Dude, it'll go so fast. You don't remember any of that. Three years at CC, like the first year was, the first year was just a blur. Like that, that like barely even counts as coaching, you know? Yeah. And the second year was like starting to like understand a little bit. And then year three was kind of like dialing in a little bit more of my specifics, what I believe things mm -hmm. I'm like testing out, like finding a little bit more of my own kind of a uh, spin on stuff. Yeah. But just like, man, three years, like, that was the the perfect amount of time, I'd say, and it, yeah. and it all all works out for sure. But yeah, and along the way, you kept saying that you'd been there forever and you're never gonna <laughs> move on to another job. So you'd already committed that for your rest of your life. And I kept saying, no, it's not. I've only <laughs> been here for two years, man. That it's barely any time. And so like already, like your hindsight on it is like, man, that really went fast. It really did. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. So everything's relative, right? And there was a, a client at at TC Boost, and I have a feeling you'll know which one I was uh, I'm talking about. Um, a junior in high school, very uh, energetic highs, very low lows. Um, his why of training, I think, was partly just for the routine. His uh, athletic goals didn't always match up with what he said they were. Yeah. But um, he came in. We, you know, we would spend some of our sessions half the time just talking, which you know that's the value that that I could provide to him and. And he was like, yeah, my girlfriend and I just broke up, you know, like, like it was great. She was my everything. And I was like, oh, oh, like, you know, how long were you guys dating? And he was like four months. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, well, to them, that is a big deal, right? It's like eternity. looking back in high school, like prom, there was so much drama around all that stuff. But it's like at that point in their, in their life, like that is the biggest thing that they've had thus far, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So like three years to I'm 27 right now, whatever that math is, um, you know, versus three years to like a 40 or a 50 year old, like the percentage is just way, way lower. Yeah. So I think there's a little bit of relativity to it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think uh, time, time does do some, some crazy things. No doubt. This thing about like four months is so in such a big time for him. I've been a part of like 11 summers that are like June, July, August into September, you know, mid May to mid August. They fly by. I couldn't really tell you what year, anything happened in yeah and those were all four month windows of time but man they all just flew by that's for sure so next we'll get to kind of the the present moment or yeah. um so the the conversations have been had about like hey you know would you do this would you do that and then it's like oh, mm -hmm. i gotta i gotta do this and xyz so when was the first moment of no this this like is probably gonna happen and i think yeah. i'm closer than further to the current moment kind of right now yeah i mean um six months ago is when some things started to come up that we were having discussions about like if this scales like it could be pretty big you know where we have not just a client but it's more of a, a corporation wants to scale something or it's a uh like a giant like club team wants to do something at scale and when it, we're talking about at scale, it means like there's going to be a few hundred people that we're interacting with, not a group of 20, 30 people, but it's going to be substantial. It's going to require a lot of time to, to make impacts with everyone to the way that you should. And um, when I had conversations with 
Tommy, like I early on was saying like, Hey, just so you know, there's some stuff on the, the future here that if it lines up the right way is going to force me to have some conversations about like, what does my role look like here? I didn't know exactly what that meant. And I didn't know what the timeline was, but for a while it, it just kind of kept feeling like this is like three months out. This is like two months out, uh, maybe two more months. Oh, we pushed the date back. It's a month. And so you start to feel to a degree, you're just like, all right, well, like I'm not, I'm not giving up, but like, I'm not going to put my eggs overly into this basket right here. And just, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm going to do everything the best way I can, wherever I'm asked to be a, a value add, I'm going to do it. I'm going to keep serving the the staff at TC Boost. I'm going to keep really guiding where the direction of TC Boost is going. I'm going to keep trying to create relationships with coaches and make stuff happen. Um, and so then as we got into the fall time is when um, some unique conversations start happening with, for me personally, just with other things I have my hands in. So I have leadership development with Jeremy. I have the podcast that I've, I've ran for three years with, uh, we'll be coming up on four years with Nick Bratton. Um, and then, you, you know, as a, as a coach, eventually you start to flip your worth to say like, do people come to the facility and then work with me or do they want to work with me and then come to the facility? And so you start having these interesting interactions with people that are like, well, I want to train with you. Like, but I, like, I can't train with you there. Can you train somewhere else? Can you do this? And over the years, I've always talked about like, if I moved out of coaching as my full-time role, I'd always love to still coach part-time just a little bit. It's, it's, I always said, I didn't want to become that coach that just like preaches about what you should be doing when I haven't coached in five years. Yeah. I, I don't like that. I don't like going to clinics and that's the type of vibe you get. Um, and so I was like, well, I don't need to necessarily travel 25, 30 minutes to go train from my house. There's plenty of spaces around and I'm very comfortable to just be like an entity that just kind of comes in and out of spaces. Um, some props to some people along the way that have really been like influential on that. It was like, Lee Taft has been on my, my podcast a couple of times, had some really great conversations. And then Jeremy himself, like that was how he did his thing. But then he wasn't married to a facility. You know, you're kind of an entity. You might go here, you go there, you show up for a team there. And I like the sound of that because what I didn't want to have was the first of the month goes and you have a $10,000 bill for your rental space. And it's like, all right, well, now I have to coach enough to make sure I cover that. I never wanted that. I just wanted the coaching to be fun and loose and enjoyable. Um, so some conversations started happening more in the early fall with some different spaces, um, some different possibilities with different people in these spaces. And I started to be able to kind of play with that. You know, to this point in my career, I've been putting in 50 to 60 hours a week in a facility that I didn't own. You know, I was just the director and that was probably not necessary but it was necessary for us to keep growing the way that we were growing. And so I, I said like this fall, I'm going to be cutting back a little bit. Instead of that many, I'll cut all the way down to like 45 hours a week. Now. Whoa. Yeah, you know, like, a, and so I was able difference. to, well, I was able to reallocate the you know, like five, five, six hours here or there to other spaces and having meetings with people. And so a unique opportunity came for the first of the year that was going to be a commitment, no matter what was going to be working with a local soccer team. And then I'd be able to coach them by my house, but it was just a seven hour a week commitment. It wasn't anything crazy. And I was always up front with Tommy along the way with this. And so he understood what I was doing. I was like, I'm not trying to pull people. I'm not trying to be a malicious, like deceitful coach here and try to do a little side thing. Like I said, I'm still going to pour in 40 hours a week here. Um, and I will pour into the staff. I'll pour into what we need done, but these seven hours now I'm just going to take hold of to really, move in a direction that I want to move to long-term wise. And so that was kind of like how we got to this point where it was like, all right, this is actually happening was we had that happening. We had some thoughts about some things we want to do with the podcast, maybe scaling that. So it was having momentum that I was going to be pulling back within the next like three months substantially, you know, and then as we got closer and closer, the conversations with the leadership and business piece became like, all right, this stuff is looking like it's going to hit. This is going to hit. All right, they're lining up. Like the date is this. All right, well, the date moved a little bit, but now the date is this. All right, this is a hard date. This is gonna, this is gonna happen. Save this date. And then it worked its way all the way down to like Christmas Eve. 
uh, is when Jeremy called me and was like, hey, like it's happening. And I was like, what do you mean it happens? He's like, it's it's happening. He's like, it's time for you to like let Tommy know, like it's time to move on. And I said like, well, like changing the role. And he's like, well, we're going to be working through it this month to figure out exactly what it looks like. But it's very likely that you're going to be done completely just with what we got going on here. And he said like pencil in the 24th of this month. This was Christmas Eve and it was going to be the 24th of January because I'm going to need you to come out with me and, and do some stuff. And then each week since then, it's gotten more and more inked harder and harder and harder. And now it's like, yeah, we're scaling a, a big enough degree that it's going to be kind of a, a full-time commitment. Jeez. At, at any point in the last month, so for example, like I've been burned on an apartment in the past, so maybe I have some, some trauma from that, <laughs> but like this current apartment, uh, closer to Northwestern, uh, I saw like eight different places, um, some good, some bad. Yeah. And you know, this was close. It was in my budget. I liked it, you know, checked off basically four of my five boxes. I park on the street, but anything that's not a suburb is the city to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is like very residential. I'm just a, a suburb kid at heart. Yeah. But I just remember like, like I had the lease, but they sent me all of my terms, et cetera, et cetera. And I just like, couldn't get myself to like actually sign it. You know, mm -hmm. so like, did you have any of those moments when it was time to finally like, like, you know, if there's a contract with Jeremy or like send that text to Tommy, like, hey, let's meet. I want to talk yeah. about X, Y, Z. Like when it came time to like put your stamp on it, were, were any of those thoughts kind of going through your head? Yeah, you you definitely have a, a little bit of that, but it's been coming for a long time. And that's I think that's a differentiator on that is that it just has been building and it's been building and it's been building and it just starts to feel more and more real. And so there's still a piece of you at the very last moment that says like, oh man, is this really happening? Like, am I too excited for this? Am I, am I is this a bad feeling? Is it too good should to be I true? Feel, yeah, should I feel sad? Should I feel happy? Like you don't really know what to feel. Um, but at the same time, my personality has always been that I'll quote unquote overly research something. And then once I decide I go, mm. I don't, I don't really have a lot of wishy washy thought patterns to me about like, Oh, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't on, on big items like that. Um, it's more of like, all right, I waited out this, this lines up. It makes sense. Okay. And then I talked to Nora about it and just said like, this is the opportunity. My wife, uh, who I'm referencing, and she was like, she was more excited than I was in that moment, just because she knows the the time frame of all of this stuff and the ups and downs. And she was just really, really supportive of me making that move and going for it. And, you know, like there, there still may be in the future, like harder times where you were having to like really sell something at some point. Um, but it, it's going to be checking all the boxes that I've always said you need to check in order to make a move like this, um, which is financially, you need to be covered and have opportunity beyond what you're currently doing. You need to have time back, right? Like as coaches, we get used to like, I work 50 hours a week. I work 60 hours a week. Do I have opportunities to just take time back now? And then do I have autonomy over what I'm doing? And TC Boost allowed me a ton of autonomy. So I wasn't going to get like a ton, way more than that. Uh, Matt knows better than anyone. Like I, I really didn't have anyone ever tell me no on anything. I could do whatever I wanted. And it was great. You know, I was able to make mistakes and keep going. Um, but the ultimate piece that I described earlier was like the vision for the company had to be set by the owner because that's his company. And so there was always just one piece to the autonomy that was I couldn't just do and direct it any way I wanted. I had to kind of follow the owner's vision and really reinforce that with the team and then lead the team the way that I, I knew that they could be led really well. Um, so those boxes all got checked. And you mentioned earlier, Matt, like sometimes it rains, it pours with job opportunities or when you finally had life experience and success, they start coming your way. I've had too many offers and opportunities come my way that just didn't check the boxes, mm. you know, where it's, it doesn't, the money's bad. The time is bad. Uh, the money's okay, 
have to move the family less autonomy over it. Uh, and, but I would have better time or, you know, like it's always missing a couple of those. And in order to miss out on a couple, you need to have one that's just ridiculous, mm -hmm. right? If you're going to have to work a lot and you have to work for somebody else, like they better be paying me a ton, a ton to do yeah. that. Right. But it just isn't going to happen in this space. So this is one of those unique ones where it's checking the boxes, the conversations are lining up and, and then you kind of go for it and you can't spend too much time thinking about, oh, is this a good move? Because there's already stuff that needs to get done to make that move happen. If someone is looking for a little bit of clarity in those boxes, they're like, I know that this currently isn't it. And in this space, yeah. no one, no one, like a, a, a handful, an extreme minority are at a spot you know, for their entire career. Yeah. So if someone's like, this isn't it, it's fine, or I'm closer to the end than further, but they don't know what those boxes are. Like how, how would you recommend someone get a little bit of clarity on that? Yeah. It's hard when you're really early in your career as Matt, I'm sure you've, you've gone through several times with your own story with people like it, the more unclear about the impact that you want to be making the harder it is going to be to check those boxes. So if there's coaches listening, we all say like we want to work with athletes or teams and help them succeed. But what kind of scale are you hoping to do that at? You need to be semi clear on that. There is, I think that I fit really well at the high school level. Okay. Then that's clear. Okay, good. Now you can start checking the other boxes in the high school level. I want to be in the college space. I want to be in the pro space. I'm very comfortable being an entity that just works in any space. Okay. Well, like all of those have different scales to them about the number of people you want to impact the type of, of business plan you might have in place, you know, and then you start to understand a little bit more about what the money might look like as far as what I need to be making. Because if you come in as a undergraduate and you're like, I want to make 150 K but I don't really want to work at a, like a power five school. I want to work at like a smaller school. You chose the wrong major. You're in the wrong spot. You know, like <laughs> automatically you're out, you know? And if it's like, I don't want to have any bosses that I have to answer to. I just want to be like the top guy. Okay. Well, if you're working in the academic space or the pro space, not going to happen. Like you, if you're in the high school, you have ADs, you have assistant ADs, you have principals, vice principals, sport coaches, superintendents, every sport coach, the parents of all the athletes that you're working with, same, it scales slightly differently in the college space. But similarly, there's always a hierarchy of guys you're answering to. And the same in the pro level. Like you have, you have a lot of guys that you're going to be responsible to. Um, and also your job security is next to zero um, in those, those spots, right? The bigger, the, bigger the, the spotlight is on your team, your program, there's a better chance that along the way you might be let go if there's a turnover. So you got to understand that. And so that you can't say like, I want autonomy. That, no, that's not what you want. That's not the ultimate what you want. If you want autonomy, you would be an entrepreneur and you would start running your own business. But if you like just coaching and then the autonomy is your side projects that you do, that, that could be, that could be a thing. Um, so just kind of understanding that. And I think that that, that part about time becomes more and more valuable as you start having family and you start just growing up a little bit and realizing that like, okay, I sacrificed a lot for a lot of other people. And I'd like to be able to kind of choose now who and when and what for I'm sacrificing going forward. And I think that's a fair place to get to after a while. I think it's a bit unfair when you're early in your career to have that mindset. You definitely have a boundary but it's hard to be like, well, I'm not going to sacrifice for that. Like I'm, I'm worried about me. Well, you're probably not going to advance wherever you're at because that's what great way to advance is to show that you're part of the team. But then you reach a point where it's time to start valuing your time. And Jeremy has said it for years, but just make your no as powerful as your why at some point to just set some boundaries on things. Uh, but those are what those boxes look like. So the first part is just having clarity about like what you're really trying to do and for me, I was always very comfortable with this kind of vague end. I never had a specific. You and your blob. Yeah, I never, really had, I never really had a specific spot that I was like, man, I just want to be in the college space so bad. 
or I want to be in the pro space so bad, or I want to own my own facility really, really bad. I didn't have that. I knew I wanted to like impact people. The way I was doing it is by coaching at that time, like X's and O's of speed and strength work, but I never really had like the space I wanted to be in. So it left me these other opportunities to say like, well, I can just let things guide it a little bit to say like, I just keep pushing how much I can earn doing this. And then I'm going to have to just figure out how do I manage my time the best. But time was the thing that I was probably lacking the most of all those things. It's because I was able to control my income by just coaching a lot and doing side things. And I had tons of control as I already described. So it was really a way to get time back was my most valuable um, commodity. Very, very cool. So I'm sure we could go off the cuff, but uh, I don't want to take too much of your, your currently, uh, reclaimed time, Yeah, no doubt. but I guess if there was, you know, to boil down your 10 plus years of all of this stuff. Um, but if someone is just like, I know I want to take control of what's next. If you could just give them kind of something simple to kind of sit with, what would, mm-hmm. what would that be? Well, I, to take control over what's next is or you start have working to, towards, I guess. Yeah. You got to relinquish a bit of the control over everything and start really thinking about, like we just talked about this idea of where you're working to get towards on a really big scale. Once that's described, then you can start getting down more into like, what's my game plan on my day to day. But it's really difficult to just start putting a game plan together today without having any sort of idea of like where you're trying to go. And at the same time, remembering that although I describe that this is what I'm really working towards, other things might come along. And then you redirect and you become involved with that. And you evaluate those things and say, is this a distraction that is a good thing to turn towards? Or is it a bad thing to turn away from? Um, But that... That's where you have to start is to, to describe like what it is that you want to be doing, what it is that you, you want to be kind of living as a life day to day, week to week, month to month. And now let's start putting a, a plan together to go there. And I know that the popular thing has been start with why. I don't necessarily agree with that. You have to have a what, and then you can say, well, this is why that what is so important to me, but I need to have this what, and it's okay if it is what other might people might say, like ridiculous. It's okay if it scares you a little bit to talk about. And if it doesn't, it's probably not going to really push you to be different and challenge you. And I've told this before on the podcast I've been on is I remember as an undergrad being in a, a large hall at UIC and they asked like, what do you want to be? like doing with this degree, kinesiology degree. It's worthless. You have to go do other things. Obviously you have to get certifications and everything. It's not, it's not an end all degree. Right. And I said, I want to work with pro athletes. And there was so much snickering from the group in there because that was not at all what anyone else was thinking. They wanted to go into PT, OT, personal train. Yeah. Like they just wanted to do that. And I said, I want to work with pros. And they're like, what does that mean? I'm like, I don't know. I just want to like, I want to work with pros in some way. And although it was kind of ridiculous, I laugh now looking back, like it's not that important to me, but I felt it was in that moment. But it gave you something in the moment to kind of work towards. It gave me something in the moment to say like, is this next opportunity help me work towards that or not? Is what I'm doing right now worth doing now because it's setting me up to potentially do that? And the answers kept being yes. And then sure enough, as I graduated and I went to TC Boost, a week later, I worked with four pros. I said, oh, well, there we go. Or, Life already check that. <laughs> already check that box, and then you start setting a different one. So then I had to change what I was like really trying to do, you know. Um, but I think that's always a, a interesting like anecdote. Is just like it's okay, and when you, as they always say, is like if you say it publicly, better chance you're gonna like make it happen because those mm-hmm. Snickers were like, I have to do it now, because those people kind of laugh saying, Yeah, right. Now I'm going to do it now because they said that, and I'm gonna figure out a way to make it happen. But yeah, just to recap back on that, it's just, you got to get some sort of direction of like what's important for you as far as what your career title is, the impact you want to be making, 
what your day to day, week to week, month to month looks like. You got to have a little bit of a what. Then you can put together your why, and then you can start putting together a plan from there. So what slash aware, and then figure out if the why is strong enough to that thing. A hundred percent. And if it's not, change it up. Yeah. It's got to be powerful enough. You know, it's got to, it's got to be big enough and cool enough that it gets you to move from where you're currently at. And that would be why I think a lot of people struggle in our profession, especially is they don't have something big enough or powerful enough that they're really going towards. And the longer they don't do steps to move towards it, it feels like it's more and more not obtainable. Mm-hmm. And so you start shrinking and shrinking and shrinking what you think you can do. And then you have a lot of guys that our profession has an extremely high turnover rate. and has an extremely high, I'm out of the profession rate. Extremely high versus other careers. And that's part of the problem. I think also going into it, because expectations is is the foundation for a, a lot of things. Mm-hmm. where it's okay to like change and pivot, you know, like, like I've had a few different things that I've, I've pursued, whether it's within coaching, whether it's just like side hobbies, like I have a, a drone that I bought that's like not been completely collecting dust, but I haven't used as much. I'm like, did I just waste a thousand dollars? But yeah. same thing, I researched it, you know, and in the moment, that's what I wanted. I used it. I'm glad I did it. And I learned, but it's like, I'm not going to beat myself up for in the moment. I did what I thought was right. Mm-hmm. You know, it's yeah. just an example, but I think, going into it where it's like 100% probably will, but it's like allowed to change, you know, versus like, Oh, this is going to be, I'll be here forever. I think it's good just to not set yourself up for failure from the beginning to be like, this is going to be it forever. Yeah. Uh, I would encourage every coach and anyone that's in a leadership position with other coaches to have that mindset that whoever I'm hiring is not going to be here forever. They're going to leave and they should leave. And when I take this job, I'm not going to just be here forever. That that type of life doesn't exist anymore in any profession. And Matt knows that a lot of the clients I work with that I've worked with for years, they make a good amount of money in the, the North Shore of Chicago. And there's different places they're a part of that we've had CEOs, we've had owner hedge of the fund Cubs. guys. Yeah, we've had Cubs. Like there has been guys in every entity possible. None of them stay anywhere. None of them. But no one questions when they leave. You know, I've had a client that they've had four or five different quote unquote career paths since I've known them, you know, or just different jobs in a similar space different types of jobs, but like, it's okay in all these other entities of life, but then our coaching life, we're always like, no, I just got to stay a coach. I'm just going to, I'm just going to fight through this and see how this goes, take control of it and provide direction for it. And it's going to pay off in the end. And as a leader that has guys coming into his team or onto his staff, have that mentality as well, that either something's gone horribly right or something's gone horribly wrong as to why this coach is still with me five years later. They should have progressed and grown and sought out an opportunity that would better their life and better their ability to make impact with athletes at scale. And they should have taken the opportunity. I've helped develop them to get there. Boom, mic drop. So uh, I must say I missed the opportunity to harass, I mean, chat with you six to, <laughs> to seven days a week in person. Um, but I think at this point, I'm just grateful. I got a, an hour and a half uninterrupted from a little, um, uh, you're not dinosaurs. What do you call your kid? Velociraptors. My yeah. My Velociraptors. One is sleeping. The other ones, I just saw one go by outside. Who's messing in the snow outside. Yeah. She's a savage it, <laughs> for context. It's like three degrees. I think here it's, yes, not, it's very cold. It's not warm out right now. So she was outside <laughs> playing with icicles and snow. Uh, so I'm just glad I got this, this time interrupted, but you know, back to 2016. Oh my gosh. That was June, May, June, 2016, when it all started, but grateful for the journey. Very, very happy and excited that I've been able to kind of witness and uh, looking forward to staying in touch and seeing where this next Avenue takes you. Of course. Appreciate it. Thanks, Matt. And uh, where can the listeners get you before I let you go? Yeah. um, My, my handle is at Steve B Stein on all of my platforms. 
pretty much everything. Some I'm on more or less. Uh, I'll be honest, in the last month, I've not been super regular on my my engagement. Just there's been a lot of things that I've been trying to juggle as we're Just going a few. on there. Just a few things right there. Um, you can also send me like any sort of messages at uh, steve at winningleader.com. If you would like to send me a personal message or just you have any questions uh, about future directions of your career, like love to talk shop um, and just kind of figure out what's next for everyone. Fantastic. Thank you. And uh, hopefully we'll talk soon.